Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today we are going to take a look at Dogecoin. So I've had a bunch of people ask me about Dogecoin lately and uh, get my thoughts on it. And Honestly, I've been staying away from all of these coins that are moving based on tweets by billionaires and interests by rappers and whatnot. Not that these guys don't have a valid argument, but you know, one tweet isn't a sustainable um, it's not. It's just not sustainable. So, um, if there if there are multiple tweets, if there's dollars behind it, if there are all sorts of other things that can push a coin higher, then I'll pay more attention. But uh, nonetheless, I wanted to make this little video um, just to get a sense, just for me, really. I'm doing this for me so that I can get a sense of where Dogecoin is, where it's been, and I want to know for myself. Is this a coin that I should take a look at um, with my dollars? So for the longest time, this coin didn't have any real movement. And this year, 2021, it started to pick up. Still relatively flat. And I believe uh, this here on January 28th would have been a tweet. One of these is a tweet from a billionaire um, who shall rename, r remain uh, nameless. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and follow our normal process. You can look at all sorts of other fundamental things and you can look at the team and see if this coin is actually going to be, um, if it's going to have the use case that they're expecting. Um, there's a nice little video on the Dogecoin website. It tells you who they are, what they're all about and why they exist. Um, and that's, that's all fantastic. Uh, for this channel, though, I really just want to look at the technical analysis and see what is the price telling me, if anything. You know, sometimes sometimes the price is saying, hey, you need to wait till there's more price. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if we came to that conclusion after so much time of being flat and then this volatility um, and also, if I believe correctly, was part of the uh, Wall Street bet subreddit as well so you know given all of the uh, kind of media and I'm gonna call reddit media all of the media driven um, purchases that have happened as of late I'm really interested in finding out if this coin is going to survive if it's not survive but if it's going to hold up hold its price you know right now it's trading just under six cents for the longest time it was trading hovering around a penny Right, so that's still a pretty nice return uh, for anyone who who caught some of this and has been, uh, you know, spending the last week watching it a lot more closely. So we're gonna do what we normally do um, because consistency is what lets us compare uh, one chart to the next. If you're always doing something different with every chart, then it's going to be tough for you to actually um, gain any insight from any of them. Right, so consistency is a good thing. In case you guys wonder why I'm uh, kind of always doing the same thing, so um, I'm gonna put this out to the the ten, the twenty, and a sixty uh, period. Uh, I changed my colors, of course, and no surprise there on the daily that all three are still in line. Even as this goes lower, these prices were such a huge reach. Um, on a daily basis that the average is going to be a while before the average really pulls back. But that being said, we have the joy of being able to easily check out shorter time frames. So let's go down to, you know, I had someone ask me to, to look at the one week. So one week would still be pretty crazy on the Doji coin. Um, four hour uh, shows it a lot more bearish. Um, and that's given the last few days. We're gonna take it even lower. I like the, I actually like the one hour, and I like to pull it out just so we are looking at a lot more price data. So, um, you had a nice crossover back here on February the 9th uh, of the short term and the and the mid term. So the 10 day or the 10 period went under the 20, and then both of those crossed. You had them by the by February by 6 p.m. Central or 1800. Uh, on the 9th of February, both coins or both moving averages were below uh, our longer term, our 60 period moving average. And they really have stayed there since then. I see in this period there was a little congestion, but right now they're clearly under. 
I don't like this 10 uh, going higher, uh, 10 day pulling back above. Uh, right now there's just confusion there, there's clutter. Um, you have the 10 just crossed, you've got the 20 uh, just above. So right now, even though all three of these are in line, I don't like that these are pulling higher. I wanna see them uh, come on down and be clear. I love trading trending markets. Like back here, from the 6th all the way through essentially the uh, the 8th, that was a lovely, beautiful trending market where price for the most part stayed above the 20 period. So that's, that's, uh, that's always preferred. I'm also, you know, I think we have just enough data to analyze a couple of different Fibonacci. I uh, will just do one fib, uh, one Fibonacci movement. Um, I was going to look at this pullback here uh, from here. The problem is we made a 100% return essentially before coming off. So uh, this will give me a better sense of where we are sitting right now. We'll do that later in the video. Um, let's go ahead and drop it down one more time just to sort of my uber short and uh, time frame and that's the 15 minute I mean if you're trading if you're trading short time frames like if you're doing the anything uh, under an hour 15 minutes should be part of your part of your view if you're holding things for five minutes like if you're one of the high frequency guys you're in and out within a minute uh, 15 hours is like an I mean 15 minutes is like 15 hours so it wouldn't apply to you so much so Anyway, let's take a look at this, and certainly at the 15-minute level, you're going to see uh, uh, you're going to see the same congestion right now. But it looks like the 10 period could end up going above the 60 period again, um, possibly pulling uh, pulling pulling this fully higher. Um, but of course, I'm going to wait before I say, "Hey, go buy some Dogecoin." <laughs> Um, in case anyone is expecting to hear that from me, uh, I'm going to have a spoiler alert right now and say you probably won't hear it. Uh, I really am cautious with things like this because you might say, hey, it's only almost six cents, like less than six cents. So I could buy, you know, a thousand, I could buy two or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still risk. There's always risk in these coins. And I just want to make sure that I'm... Um, uh, treating my capital like capital and not ga not not gambling with it, you know. A lot of guys gamble with their capital, and they'll come up and wonder what happened to their capital. So you have to treat it, treat the dollars like they matter, even if you have a lot of them. <laughs> All right, let's go over. Let's. I'm gonna pull this back actually to the one hour because I really like the one hour time frame, and we're gonna look at the MACD. Um, get rid of these moving averages. We're gonna look at the MACD and see if we're see if this gives us a little more insight into the Doge coin. Okay, so um, this is actually not bad. You've got a cross uh, in the overbought territory uh, that lined up with this coming off. So of course these are some really significant bars. Um, pull that. These were really scary kind of bars uh, that came down here, but uh, this was spot on. I mean, if you could have uh, caught some of that short, even with the up movements, this thing ultimately fell and came on down. Um, always tough to use in a, uh, you know, sort of slowly trending market, but you do see some crosses above and below the uh, zero line and then I like this I like this buy it didn't get I'd prefer that it had gone fully under the zero line uh, so that that cross would have been a little more significant a trading uh, pattern this right here to me is not a trading signal uh, but it did push on higher with that and you saw um, uh, the start of this you, you probably would have gotten out at, what what is this? This is February the 7th uh, at uh, 20 hours uh, or hour 20. So you probably would have gotten shaken out and missed that last little bit 
of the trade, but I actually don't mind that. My goal is not to be in the trade at the start and hold it till the lights turn off at, at the last minute. I want to get in, make my money, and get out. So that's just my trading style. I know you guys all have different trading styles, and you just have to figure out what works for you. Let's switch up the time frames on this too. Maybe I will uh, go a little more like a four hour. Um, four hour is very interesting actually because the the, the data is a little cleaner. Um, now this lagged big time. Um, this crossover here on the 29th, you would have lost a lot of money. Um, almost 50% of that previous up move. Uh, I do like this buy here, but I would have been happier, like I said, if it was below the zero line. And then you have this strong sell here. And now we're actually approaching a point where this looks like it might be a buy. Um, this, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it? The MACD line appears to be moving, uh, uh, soon to be moving above the, the nine day moving average, the signal line. And so if that's a cross, this could actually look like a buy and it's a buy in the oversold territory because we're below the zero line. So that could be very interesting. I'm going to uh, go one more step. So we looked at one hour. We looked at the four hour. I'm going to take it on to the 15 minute. And of course, the 15 minute just is all over the place. But I like seeing clear, like when I'm, when I'm using it and I'm able to see clear buys and clear sells that would have matched the market perfectly, um, buys below the uh, buys in the oversold territory uh, sells being in the overbought territory it makes me happy and it makes me trust the indicator more for that for this particular for this particular uh, 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 coin so I'm just scrolling through again this is a really choppy period um, I just don't know. I think you would have just gotten chopped up either way. It doesn't matter which signal you were honing in on. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When, when, when the markets are moving based on news, it's hard to make sense of everything. And the things that used to work will sometimes not work for you. So you end up, you know, you end up in a scenario where you're, you're losing money, which isn't good. Never, never good. So... All right, so we are back in the four hour MACD. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of a Fibonacci retracement. So I'm kind of curious how it all uh, will, will look. So we're just gonna go from this midterm low up to, uh, up to this other high over here, just to get a sense of where we might be at this one moment relative to where we've been. So, got the peak there, and I'm just gonna pull this on over, because I want to know if there's anything interesting going on. Um, there you go. I don't know if there's anything interesting. So, let's see, we have this 23.6% level, managed to provide a little bit of support also, we've got the 38.2% level was support there, a little bit of support there and there. Um, not really resistance as much there. Uh, the 50% level has played a role here. And it, well, although we had one full bar essentially below it, it almost acted as support and it's sort of acting as support right now. So this actually, um, could be a good sign that there might be, you know, between this and then that MACD line that looked to, appeared to be going uh, or appearing to, to cross in the next day or two, it might be worth keeping an eye out for a possible buy signal on Dogecoin. I'm just going to take this down to the one hour should sort of reinforce um, the levels a little bit, just see a little more clearly. I mean, yeah. This is why I like uh, using um, Fibonacci retracements, is that sometimes you're looking and you realize like, oh, I didn't realize that price level had any significance. Um, and it just gives me a clear visualization, a clear image of where support and resistance is. 
which is really the goal of technical analysis. The last thing I'm going to do for this video, and I'll close it off, as you guys have listened to me chime on uh, enough already, we're going to draw us a nice little channel because I'm curious too if price is going lower where might it be heading so there you go um, that's a price channel for you we definitely appear to be going uh, lower um, so maybe maybe you would wait until you get across out of this channel so maybe six cents uh, yeah maybe six cents uh, before looking to go ahead and purchase again any dogecoin and honestly for it to have a full breakout you're looking at like uh, six point oh six three four or somewhere around there uh, just so that you're certain that it gets on out of this channel and stays on out of it um, but again my my hesitation with dogecoin is because uh, it's moved it really got a pop because of you know certain billionaires and it never really like the business case study hasn't changed and once it does uh, beyond just the speculations of of uh, every hopeful lotto ticket buying uh, 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 cryptocurrency trader uh, present company included don't worry I'm not judging you um, I do look for coins that are going to offer me 3x 4x or something like that I'm actually upset when all I get is 2x sometimes so um, how's that for being greedy <laughs> so I fall in the same boat but I just want to see a little bit more out of dogecoin before I'm gonna buy it and you know it's not a matter of shorting cryptocurrency because that's actually more difficult to pull off but if you currently own dogecoin I would challenge you to find a place um, where you say okay I'm, I'm actually going to exit here unless unless you are truly going to not trade it and you're going to have this hold this as an investment and that's a whole different thing so oftentimes people will take a loss on their stock and then say things like oh well you know I'm just putting it in the portfolio it's it's a long-term investment I'm in for the long run and the truth of it is they took a short-term loss and turn it into a long-term investment hoping that in the long term they're going to make money on it I like to be I don't allow myself to do that um, I try my I try my best not to not to lie to myself and call a trade a trade and an investment an investment most of my crypto and altcoin kind of uh, plays are definitely trades so if this is indeed a trade and it continues to go lower you might want to have an exit point um, and also I'm looking at this thing if it, if it goes ahead and goes back above six maybe even uh, 0.0635 or so um, then I'll be looking to buy some dogecoin and then maybe I'll be uh, in that subreddit group uh, sending this coin some love so anyway that's enough I sounds like I'm a little goofy tonight anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up thank you guys so much for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for the comments comments have been awesome I do read them thank you for comments uh, it's hard for me to answer when someone asks an outright um, price because I don't have a crystal ball I can't tell you like hey this coins definitely going to like no can't do it all I'm doing is looking at the charts and hopefully in the process I'm gonna see something that lets me know if I should trade it or not and hopefully this is helping you too alright so have a good day and uh, we'll talk again soon take care